started this channel many years ago to showcase my gaming stream videos. As time went by and interests changed, so did the content. I find myself once again in the midst of change. Life events over the past couple of years have sparked a change in priorities and I find myself focusing on the hobby that I have loved since a child. As I started posting pictures of my work on my personal Facebook page and sharing to multiple groups, a lot of questions on how I did things started coming in. It was at that point I decided I would start this venture of making scale model videos. This video is part of a larger project that will have its own video. It is also the first part of a two-part series leading up to the main project. In this video I will show how I do my initial armored fighting vehicle track painting. The main project I am doing is a refurbishment of a 135th scale Panzer 1B by Zvezda. I built this kit over a decade and a half ago and I've learned a lot of techniques since that I think will improve the build. The main thing that I sparked the project was I originally put the tracks on backwards, not knowing any better at the time. I had to replace the kit's rubber band tracks, well, because they weren't. They were stiff, very brittle, and just broke apart when I tried to bend them. I replaced them with model cast and individual link tracks, but when I assembled them, they ended up glued together. I did, when I decided to do the refurbishment, try to take them off to reverse them, but they were not flexible enough to be able to get them to look right after putting them back on. I was, however, able to salvage some of them to replace the kit's original spare track. To replace the model cast and tracks, I decided to go with T-Rex Studios resin tracks. I had used their tracks previously on a couple of German subjects. The specific track I chose, TR85003, Panzer Kumpfwagen 1 tracks late type with cleats were the only ones I could find in stock at the time I purchased them. The tracks were finely detailed and looked great. I am by no means a track expert and cannot vouch for the accuracy of the set. They are a single pin design and can be difficult to get together at times. By single pin design, I mean they have one single resin pin that is inserted from one side that goes most of the way across the links. The other side has a small nipple on the inside of the first opening that needs to be rotated into the hole in the next link. The fit on most links was so tight I had to sand the corner down a little to get them to go together. There are left and right hand tracks and the pins are all the same and are inserted from the inside end of the track. Most of the pins went in their holes without issue but I did have to use a number 20 drill bit to enlarge some to get the pins in. The tracks are fairly brittle and I did break several during assembly. Fortunately, there are plenty of extra provided to complete the job. If you want to skip the rest of the track assembly, you can skip ahead to about the 5 minute 58 second mark. Thank you. 
The instructions said it should take about two hours to assemble, but it took me about five. It took 100 links per slide for this set. My first step is to prime with Mr. Surfacer 1500. This is a new thing for me. I never primed anything before I started building again last year. I use the primer that comes in the bottle and airbrush it on. After that is dried, I airbrush on the base color. For this, I like to use Ammo Dark Tracks. All the paint products I use in this video will be listed in the video credits as well as in the description below. If building workable tracks, you want to be careful not to flood the surface and spray light coats until you get the desired coverage. If you lay the paint down too thick, it could bind up the links and you risk damaging or breaking the links when fitting the track to the running gear, especially resin tracks. Once the base coat is dry, it is time to apply the first wash. This wash is an enamel wash and I use ammo track wash. One thing I wanted to do with this video is to have the hand applied steps done in real time. Outside of drying time, this process takes about the length of this video. I placed a piece of printer paper under the tracks to protect my workbench. The next few steps are quite messy and I would end up with wash all over my cutting mat. Weathering military vehicles has always been intimidating to me. I just didn't know how to get them to look dirty like I had always seen them in real life while on active duty. Aircraft was always easier for me because the process seemed to be more neat and tidy. After my dad died in 2022, I started working on his unfinished builds. One of those builds was the Tamiya 135th scale 2.5 ton truck. He had most of the sub-assemblies together and primed with what I assume was Tamiya NATO Black and white sprayed on the upper surfaces. I knew I wanted to make it dirty and found a couple ammo products and dad supplies. I started looking into them. After binge watching a bunch of night shifts videos on YouTube, I decided to pick up some of the ammo weathering sets to try out. The results were, well, better than I had imagined, and I was hooked. You can see more of the truck photos on my Facebook page. I came to the conclusion that I was overcomplicating the process in my mind. Getting a vehicle dirty is a messy business in real life, so be messy on the model. I put the wash on one side of the track, let it dry, then turned it over and applied the wash to the other side. In hindsight, I guess I could have done it both in one sitting. You'll see me pick the track up when I'm finished. What I'm doing here, if not apparent by the other track sliding across the bench top, is blowing the excess wash out of the openings in the track so I don't have to clean them out after it dries.
After the enamel wash has dried, it is time for some acrylic washes. I mix these myself, and my first acrylic wash is Ammo Dark Rust. I put a couple drops of paint in my mixing palette, then add water. I fill the palette about halfway and mix thoroughly. Since water is a key component in the oxidation of metal, it makes sense to me that water-based paints would work quite well. After all, they will act like water and pull and dry, leaving the paint behind in a similar manner that metal would rust. The first of my three acrylic washes I put on the heaviest, covering the majority of the tracks. I just haphazardly slosh it on and generally make a mess all over the tracks. Just like the enamel washes, after each acrylic wash, I blow the excess out all of the clogged openings in the track. My second acrylic wash is again an ammo product, this time medium rust. I mix a little less of it since I won't be using as much. Again I just slosh it on randomly covering about 50 to 75 percent of the track.
My final acrylic wash is Ammo Light Rust. Apply it in the same manner as the others, randomly covering about 10 to 25 percent of the track. I won't say this is the end-all be-all to do tracks. I have watched a lot of great videos in the past year and a half that contributed to me finding the technique that worked for me. I hope you can all learn from this as I have learned from those many videos. The best advice I can give is learn. Experiment with different techniques and adopt those that work best for you. In the next video, we will finish the tracks by adding dirt and mud effects. I hope to see you there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Feedback from the viewers is always the best way to improve the channel and the content. If you like this video and want to see more like it, and other great content, hit that subscribe button below and ring the bell to get notified when new content drops. You can also find me on Facebook. My Facebook page will have additional content from my entire model collection from years past, as well as all the content from my old decal business, Mod Decals. I also have a Discord server where you can hang out, share your work, and see more content than what you will get in the videos. Also, if you're feeling generous and want to contribute, you can also check out my Patreon page. Every little bit helps the channel grow. You can find the links to those in the description below. Finally, I want to thank my Patreon members and my post-production screening team. Your value is beyond measure.